Your membership at the ID Exchange Old Post Office Makerspace allows you access to a variety of innovative, creative technology. This tutorial will demonstrate the basics of preparing and slicing your 3D print on both of our Cubicon 3D printers. Here at ID Exchange, we have two Cubicon 3D printers. We have the Single Plus and the Style. The Single Plus has a larger print bed, allowing us to print larger objects, while the Style is able to print more intricate objects, usually with better results. They are both single extrusion printers that we currently use to print with PLA. To get started preparing your file to print, you will want to load the Cubicreator software on the computer. The next thing you will want to do is to ensure you select the correct model that you will be printing on. To do so, you choose the Set option on the top menu, then select Environment Setting. A menu will appear on the screen and you will then click on the Select Model button on the right hand side. You will then choose from either the 310 Single Plus or the 210 Style. Once you've selected the correct printer, hit OK on both menus and you will now see a representation of the printer bed on the screen. Next, you will want to load your file into the software. Cubic Creator can work with either OBJ or STL files. First, select the Load button from the menu options. Find your file on the computer and open it. It should now show your file laying on the bed of the printer. If you need to adjust your view of the object, you can do so at any time by selecting either the Pan View or Rotate View buttons from the menu. The Pan View will allow you to move the bed along the X and Y axes. The Rotate button will allow you to rotate your view in any direction. You want to ensure that your object is laying with the flattest side touching the bottom of the bed. Sometimes objects come in sideways or upside down. So if you need to move it to the flat side, you will select the Orient on Surface button. You will then select the part of the 3D object you want to be touching the bed, and it will automatically move the object. Now, with your object selected, you will see a menu appear on the left-hand side of your screen. Here, you can scale your object up and down as needed, or you can enter the exact measurements of your object in millimeters. You will also notice there are X, Y, and Z axis arrows on your object. You can rotate your object accordingly by selecting the direction you want and moving your mouse. Once you have the object placed and sized correctly, you are ready to set up your slice settings. To do so, select the button that says Slice Option from the menu. You will then select the User Setting tab here. There are many options to play around with here, but this video will simply show you the most common settings you may want to change. First, you have the layer height. The layer height is the measurement in millimeters of each layer. The less the layer height, the higher quality the print will be, however it will also take longer to complete the print. We will usually print most of our 3D items at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, unless otherwise specified. The second setting is your infill. 3D prints do not typically print as a solid object. The infill is the amount of material that will occupy the middle of your 3D object. The higher percentage of infill you have, the stronger your object will be. Most objects do not require a large percentage of infill. We will usually set the infill percentage between 10 to 20%. The third setting to examine is the support option. Any 3D printed object that has an overhanging element that is greater than 45 degrees will need to have supports added. If there are no supports, your object will most likely fail as it can't print in mid-air without anything to adhere to. Here you can simply check the box on whether supports are needed or not. The last setting to take a look at is the Build Plate Adhesion setting. If your object is flat and has a decent sized amount touching the bed, you will not need to have any Build Plate Adhesion, and in that case you will deselect the checkbox here and choose None from this drop-down menu. However, if your object has only a small portion touching the bed, you may need to give it some extra adhesion, otherwise you risk the print moving and therefore failing. To do so, ensure the box is selected, and then you can choose either a raft or a brim from the drop-down menu. A raft will add a thin layer underneath your entire object. This option is good for very small prints or prints with a very small surface area touching the bed. The second option is a brim. A brim will add a very small, thin layer of filament to the outside edge of your print. This option will help prevent warping and uses less filament than a raft. Once you have chosen all of your settings, you're ready to slice your object. You will select the Prepare button from the menu. You will notice a new toolbar has now appeared on the right-hand side of the screen, and the top menu has slightly changed. 
If you raise or lower the slider on the right-hand side toolbar, you can see each layer that will be printed from the bottom to the top. When satisfied, you will select the Save to G-Code button, which effectively will save your object as the appropriate file type that the printer will read. You will then select and save the file onto the appropriate USB or SD card. Once you save the file into the correct location, a small box will appear on the screen giving you the total runtime of your 3D print, as well as the weight in grams of your object. You can then hit OK and exit the software, ejecting your USB or SD card from the computer. That's it! You have now officially sliced your first object and can now head on over to the 3D printer for the next step. Be sure to watch part two of this series to learn how to run the printers and start printing your file.